Hello everybody. In this video tutorial I want to quickly discuss with you the relationship between the standard free energy Gibbs energy and the mass action ratio of a reaction. Let's assume we have the reaction A plus B and it is a reversible reaction gives the products C plus D. And we want to figure out uh, whether this reaction goes either in the direction of the products or whether it goes in the direction of the reactants or the substrates. Now, um, we know that uh, we can use some basic thermodynamics uh, to make a decision which way this reaction goes. And we know that under standard conditions, so standard conditions, standard conditions, conditions, we measure what is called delta G naught, and this is the standard free energy. And this, uh, the defi definition of these standard conditions is that we have, for all our components of this reaction, we start with a one molar concentration. All these components will be put together at a one molar concentration, so that's our start. And then we wait for a certain period of time until uh, this reaction has established itself and it has found the equilibrium. And then we measure again the concentrations of the different components. Let's say uh, we uh, find that uh, at the equilibrium we have A went down from 1 molar to 0 0.5 molar, B also went down 0 0.5 molar, C went up to 1.5 molar and so did D also 1.5 molar. And uh, if we look at it, uh, when, we, when we do that, we will find that uh, here we had four concentration, total concentration, and here we also have four, so we haven't lost anything. So that is how the, con the, the conditions when we have reached the equilibrium. And we can write the equation for the equilibrium. So we can write the equilibrium constant, K equilibrium constant, equals the concentration of C in the equilibrium times the concentration of D in the equilibrium divided by the concentrations of A in the equilibrium times the concentration of B in the equilibrium. Well, we can now uh, use our numbers that we've determined for the different concentrations uh, for C, we had 0 0.5 molar times 0. Point, sorry. For C, we had 1.5 molar times 1.5 molar divided by A, we had 0 0.5 molar times 0 0.5 molar. The molars all occur cancel out. And if we put that in the calculator, our equilibrium constant would be 9. And we can now calculate our delta G naught for this reaction, because we know that delta G naught equals negative the gas constant times the temperature times the natural logarithm of the equilibrium constant. And the gas constant is roughly 8.31 joule per mole and Kelvin. The temperature, uh, let's say we do the reaction at 25 degrees, so that would be uh, 273, because we need the temperature in Kelvin, 
273 plus 25 and that gives us 298 Kelvin. So 298 Kelvin times, and I just make a little bit of space here, times the natural logarithm of 9. And if we put that into uh, a calculator, we get negative uh, 5.4 times 10 to the power of 3 joule per mole. Uh, or we can write this also as negative 5.4 kilojoule per mole. So under standard conditions, the reaction is pretty much on the side of C plus D. And that is basically what this equation tells us. The reaction goes from the left to the right. And we know that already because our equilibrium concentrations for A and B are much smaller than the equilibrium concentrations for C and D. And so therefore, we know that the reaction goes from left to right. Now, what happens, however, if we are not under equilibrium, under, under standard conditions? Let's say we look at uh, the reaction, we take a snapshot of the reaction, and we didn't start with one molar for each. We have sort of our observation, observation, and we observe that we have the following concentrations. So our observed concentrations are 0 0.1 molar, for B, we have 0 0.2 molar, uh, 0 0.3 molar, let's say 0 0.4 molar. So these are the observed concentrations. Now we want to know how does the reaction under these conditions, which way does the reaction go? Does it go under these conditions, under these observed conditions, where we are at the moment, will the reaction continue to go in this direction or will it go in this direction? So what we can do is we can do pretty much the same thing that we've done uh, up there, but obviously we haven't reached equilibrium or we believe we haven't reached equilibrium. What we can do is we can calculate the mass action ratio and this is usually abbreviated with a Q and we can write this as the concentration of C that we observe times the concentration of D that we observe divided by the concentration of A observed times the concentration of B observed. And all we need to do for this mass action ratio, that is the mass action ratio, mass action ratio, is we just simply plug in the numbers and we get Q equals 0 0.3 molar times 0 0.4 molar divided by um, 0 0.1 molar times 0 0.2 molar. Again, we see the molars cancel out. That's uh, good. That's reassuring. And if we put that in our calculator, we would uh, get a mass action ratio of 6. And what we can do now is we can, again, we can calculate a delta G for this case. And I would like to call it delta G Q. That indicates that we are not at equilibrium. That is at this particular mass action ratio. And the equation, again, is very similar to what we have seen above. It is negative R times T times natural logarithm of Q in this case. So uh, we know what this is. It's minus 
8.31 joule per mole and Kelvin times uh, T and we do it at uh, 25 degrees so that would be 298 Kelvin times ln of 6 in this case and if we calculate that we uh, get um, a delta GQ of negative 4.4 kilojoule per mole. So we know that under standard conditions the reaction has a delta G naught of negative 5.4 kilojoule per mole under our concentrations under our observed concentrations we get a delta g of delta gq of minus of negative 4.4 so what we can do now is we can put these things together and we can say our delta g the free energy free gibbs energy equals our standard free energy minus the energy for the mass action ratio. So with that we get what we just calculated negative 5.4 kilojoule per mole minus that's this minus here negative 4.4 kilojoule per mole so that gives us minus times minus gives positive so we have minus 5.4 plus 4.4 kilojoule per mole and that gives us negative 1.0 kilojoule per mole so in this case we know that our delta g the free uh, energy is still negative let me just quickly highlight that so we're still negative here so that means our reaction a plus b gives c plus d under these observed conditions we can predict that this reaction will still move on in this direction because we know that if delta G is smaller than zero we are going from left to right so here we can make a nice prediction that it goes in this direction so what about if uh, we get a slightly different numbers so let's say we look at the reaction observed values again so we have a b c d and let's say we have 0 0.1 molar 0 0.2 molar and let's say c we have 0 0.9 molar and 0 0.9 molar and again we have a plus B C plus D and now we want to know if we actually observe these numbers here will the reaction still go in this direction or will it go in this direction and again what we can do is we can formulate our mass action ratio so Q in this case again is C observed times D observed divided by A concentration of A observed times the concentration of B observed and if we put uh, numbers in we get 0 0.9 molar times 0 0.9 molar divided by 0 0.1 molar times 0 0.1 molar molars cancel out and if we put this in a calculator I think we get a mass action ratio of 40.5 and again we can calculate our delta G for the mass action ratio as 
negative 8.3. 1 times 298 times ln 40.5. And if we do that, we get um, delta G for the mass action of negative 9.2 kilojoule per mole. And now, what we want to uh, do again is we want to calculate what is our delta G in this case. Again, delta G is delta G under standard conditions minus our delta G for the mass action ratio. And this uh, we just simply put in the numbers. So we calculated our delta G naught. Uh, we had this as negative 5.4 kilojoule equals negative 5.4 kilojoule per mole minus negative 9.2 kilojoule per mole. That is what we just calculated for our delta G mass action ratio. And uh, if we uh, do this with a calculator or just uh, by hand, what we will get is that this one here, so negative minus times minus cancels out. So we get minus 5.4 plus 9.2 kilojoule per mole. And that gives us a positive value of positive 3.8 kilojoule per mole in this case. So here now we have a positive sign and this means that under these conditions when we have our reaction A plus B gives C plus D. We know that the reaction no longer goes from left to right, it now goes in this direction. It goes from right to left, just simply because delta G now is larger than zero, delta G is positive. So we can very easily determine which way a reaction goes when we have some observed data and when we know what our uh, standard free energy is, we then can say under these conditions here, the reaction would proceed from right to the left in this direction towards the reactant, whereas with observed concentrations like this one here, we said we decided that the reaction goes from the left to the right. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.